This is Five on Your Side at Noon, focused on you. Guilty! 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 A guilty verdict for former President Donald Trump, but can he still be elected as the President of the United States? Coming up, our Verify team has the answers for you this afternoon. Thanks for joining us for your news at noon. I'm Holden Krewicki. That guilty verdict dropped yesterday afternoon in former President Donald Trump's hush money trial. The jury found Trump guilty on 34 counts of falsifying business records. This in connection with a hush money payment to adult film actress Stormy Daniels ahead of the 2016 presidential election. He now has about a month and a half to prepare for his sentencing on July 11th. About two hours ago, Trump addressed the verdict publicly. If they can do this to me, they can do this to anyone. And these are bad people. These are, in many cases, I believe, sick people. It was a rigged trial. We wanted a venue change where we could have a fair trial. We didn't get it. We wanted a judge change. We wanted a judge that wasn't conflicted. And obviously, he didn't do that. Trump wasn't the only person with something to say after this decision. The guilty verdict has brought out strong reactions from both Republicans and Democrats, including some people who say they're proud of the jury for making this decision. I'd say that I think they're really impressive and brave because I don't know that I would feel secure trying to uh, put myself in harm's way. And it feels like it, it might have been in harm's way, potentially. So I'm proud of that. I believe that everybody's, everybody who's been supporting him for since he started running, they're still going to be behind him 100%. Now that a verdict has been reached, there's been one big question on the tip of everyone's tongues. Can Trump still run for re-election? Casey Decker from our National Verify team breaks down the constitutional law. For the first time ever, an American president has been convicted of a felony. A New York jury has found former President Donald Trump guilty on all 34 counts of falsifying business records. This related to hush money payments he made to a porn star during his 2016 campaign. Sentencing is scheduled for mid-July, only a few days before the Republican National Convention, where Trump is expected to become the party's nominee for president. So let's verify. Can you be elected president if you've been charged with or convicted of a crime? Our sources are the Constitution and the U.S. Supreme Court. Article 2 of the Constitution lays out three eligibility requirements for becoming president. You have to be a natural-born American citizen, be at least 35 years old, and have been a U.S. resident for at least 14 years. That's it. No other requirements. And the Supreme Court has further ruled that neither Congress nor state legislatures can add new requirements on top of what the Constitution already says. The only way to change the requirements would be a constitutional amendment. So we can verify, yes, you can be elected president if you've been charged with or convicted of a crime. Even someone who's found guilty and sent to prison could still, legally speaking, if elected, run the country from a cell. With your verify, I'm Casey Decker. What would you like for us to verify? You can email your questions to verify at KSDK.com. You can also find more coverage on the Trump verdict on KSDK.com and the 5 Plus app. Alrighty, everyone. Meteorologist Tracy Hinson here with you. And it is sunny for now and it's beautiful outside. It's not going to be the case all day long, so get outside and enjoy it while it lasts. We are going to see cloud cover push in, and we're going to see some rain later on tonight. You can see right now we have beautiful sunny conditions. We have a little bit of what looks like alto cumulus. It's always hard to tell from a still image rather than being out there to see it with the naked eye, but that's just my analysis there for you. 79 degrees at this lunchtime hour. Winds are on the east-southeast at about 15 miles per hour. That east-southeast wind, that's the winds of change there. We are bringing in some warmer conditions as we head into the next 10 days here. For the rest of today, though, we'll mostly be in the mid to upper 70s, just under 80 degrees, and we are going to bring that rain in later on tonight, and it will continue to rain overnight with some of our heaviest rainfall coming in for uh, the after midnight and before 6 a.m. Coming up, I'll outline what else you can expect in your seven-day forecast. All right, Tracy, thank you. Just hours ago, there was a car crash near Lindbergh and I-270 in North St. Louis County. The Missouri State Highway Patrol tells us there were seven vehicles involved. According to the crash report, a driver was driving too fast and caused the crash. There were two injuries, one moderate and one minor injury. 
Hours ago, folks rushed from their rooms at a Motel 6 in Troy, Illinois after a fire. It happened just before midnight at the motel on Edwardsville Road by Highway 55. The owner confirmed everyone was evacuated and no one was hurt. Fire crews believe the fire was sparked by electrical issues in two rooms. Right now, a renovation to University City's police and court building could be getting a little closer to happening. The process has taken years. Our Diamond Palmer brings us more on the plan. Residents in University City say they would have liked to vote whether to do renovations to old buildings or to build new ones for the police department and court building. This comes after last night when University City hosted a town hall about the renovation project they say has been 44 years in the making. Both the court and police department have been squeezed inside of one trailer since 2016, which is now failing to be big enough and has aging floors that are peeling up. City leaders say this $22 million project won't cost residents any money because they'll utilize revenue the city makes. The renovation would include new entrances, a connection between the two buildings, additional parking, and new interview rooms. But the cost of the project goes up each year it's delayed. As the project has been delayed and delayed and delayed, the cost has increased and increased and increased. University City's Mayor Terry Crow has responded by saying this upgrade will enable them to move their temporary facilities to a permanent space, allowing them to maintain their exceptional service to residents of University City and a state of the art space. Without any cost to taxpayers, we can revamp and preserve two historical buildings in our Civic Plaza and bring them back to life. The mayor and council will take up a final vote on June 10th, and the renovation could be complete as soon as 2026. Reporting in University City, Diamond Palmer, 5 on your side. A new measure to get more young people to ride the Metrolink. Ahead, our Sydney Stallworth breaks down the new plan to give discounts to the youth. An electric change of pace for Jeep. Ahead, more on its first ever fully electric vehicle. 